Hey, um, yeah. can, can you get to a browser? Can I get to a browser? Yeah. Can you go to um, facebook.com slash amazing ribs and see if I'm on there? Okay, it looks like it has it is streaming. Yeah, there you are. Uh, it's there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, oh, that really? We're not ready yet. <laughs> uh, thank you, eleven people that are there already. I'm just testing the connection. We won't be live till uh, we we'll get started uh, formally in a few minutes. Eleven o'clock. Eleven o'clock. I'm uh, I'm doing a remote, so it's um, checking and making sure everything is up and running. So, hang in there if you will, or come back at eleven. All right, I have the camera working. I have the computer working. I have we're we're everything's ro rock and rolling on um, technically on this end. Beckman, Tom Beckman. Oh my God, how are you, Chef? <laughs> Sit in your seat and see how you adjust your camera angle. Hey, so I'm, I'm at this um, Wanamaker's out in uh, Downers Grove, and uh, check this out, Tom. Where is it? Look what he's got. <laughs> Our friend. Pretty cool, huh? Chef uh, Beckman is a uh, pastry chef. An instructor, Chef Instructor Tom, is what he's known as, and uh, he and I, last I saw him, we were uh, we're making pizzas on the uni. On the uni. Well, that that is a nice little tool, the uni. Well, I since people are here already, I hate to keep them waiting. They're bored. I'm I'm here at Wanamaker's in Downers Grove, which is a western suburb, and with me is Steve Kress. Steve uh, is the uh, barbecue expert here, and he runs this cool. Let me uh, take a uh, look around. So give you a look around this place. First of all, it looks like Santa's workshop. Uh, this is just a large outdoor store. Wow, you're shaky. I'm shaking? Yeah. Well, that's because I'm an old man. I'm walking. I don't How's the audio? Uh, Beckman, somebody tell me if you guys can hear me okay. I know we're bubbing. Uh, I'll just give you a quick walk through the barbecue section here. What's, what's, what we're going to do today, he's got everything here. Steve and I are going to walk through and look at some of our favorite stuff and demonstrate some of our favorite tools and toys. Just a ton of stuff. Look at all the rubs and the sauces. A lot of fun back in here. So somebody tell me, how's the audio? Can you hear me? Only as, <laughs> I'm only as old as I feel. Thanks, guys. Dan. Hello, Dan Mancuso. Audio is in and out better now. Hmm. I'm, I, uh, stick with me if you would, because there is audio on this camera. And uh, I'm just going to keep try to keep it near in my face as I walk away, testing the audio. Look, well, he's got all these triggers. Oh God, well, it is heavy on this thing. Whoa, look at that! Oh, this is the new one. No, that's the that's the 1300. That's the 1300. I don't have the new one out. You don't have the new one. Yet? I have. It's in the back. I don't. I obviously lost space because of Christmas trees. 
Look at everybody's looking at my empty spots because I've sold so much for sold so much for for things. So how's that audio now, guys? I, uh, hello, Rich. Gosh, I recognize a lot of faces here. Peter, it gets faint faint when I start to walk around. Hmm. I wonder what. All right, let's see if I can control. Maybe it's not using the internal mic. Okay, let's see how I control the mic. See here, I'm going to switch cameras. This is the camera. It's it's called a Mevo. There we go. Mevo. Not cheap, but it's it's wireless and it's capable of connecting to Facebook and LinkedIn and all that stuff by itself. But I'm using a different tool to do that. The technology is way over my head, folks. Um, okay, let's see if I can control the the microphone or improve the microphone camera mic there it is okay so it's picking up okay wait a second i'm just switching mics all right now i think now it's using the uh the, the mevo mic so we'll try it one more time and i'm marching around let's uh that's just a well let's just not walk aimlessly let's look at what some of the stuff he's got here what are all these those are the tray liners for the tray liners for the Traegers. Tray liners for Traegers. What do tray liners do? Uh, you can put them on the drip tray so that you don't have to. Uh, ah. Use aluminum foil. Back in the day, we used to use aluminum foil. But I used that a couple of years ago with tray liners. Oh, I have to get a look at those because I use aluminum foil on my. Um, I have a Mac instead of a Traeger. So I should be coming through audio wise through the camera now. It's supposed to have a good mic. Look at all this cool stuff. Yeah, you said it sounds good if you're walking around. Okay, so we're hooked up. We don't need to see the bathroom. I've already seen the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> First thing I did when I got here. <laughs> so look, look at all the wood. And then uh, he's got a whole, all the Weber accessories. A lot of this stuff I know about, but some of this stuff I don't. And so it's going to be fun to hear Steve, his input. I just started using these tumbleweeds. They're really good fire starters. And I've been using these lighter cubes. I don't know if you guys are familiar with them. Hard to see, but uh, they're little paraffin cubes. And they light real well. You really, It shows two because they want you to use two, but you only need to use one. Um and I've had good luck just buying paraffin at the candle store and um, taking a wad of newspaper and dipping it in melted paraffin. And uh, it makes a great charcoal starter. El Cheapo. And he's got... Uh, had to have some lighter fluid, didn't you? Yeah, well, there's some people that still like it. Yeah, yeah. Don't sell a lot of it. But. I tell you, when I smell lighter fluid in my neighborhood, and I do occasionally, I want to go down and grab them by the throat. Look at all the... Uh, I don't know how well this thing is tracking. So, Steve, I'm going to start doing a lot more griddle cooking. Um, I'm working on a book now. My new book will come out spring 24. Mm -hmm. My deadline is March 1st. Yeah. So um, I'm working on the chapter on grill cooking, and I just subscribed to a, a service called Yes Chef. Okay. And it's about 100 bucks a year, and they've got a, a lot, bunch of really good chefs, including Francis Malman. And Francis is um, from Patagonia, Argentina, and he's got this little island all to himself, hmm. and he cooks on planches yeah. and in fires. I mean, it's real crude and raw, and he's doing beautiful work with it. And I want to do some more of it. And uh, so I mean, I've got a lodge griddle, uh, just a lodge cast iron griddle. And I put it on my gas grill. Mm -hmm. And I know you can buy, do you sell any of the standalone griddles? You know, the... Uh, I, I have the, 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 what I have right now is uh, the Pit Boss. Griddle. Well, now th this is, you know, uh, a standalone... Just a standalone flat top. Flat top, yeah. Oh, here it is. There's a whole bunch of these have come on the market in the past couple of years, 
And they're not terribly expensive. How much is this little thing? This one's 700. 700. But this one has the ceramic. Oh. The plate is coated in ceramic, so it doesn't, it helps with some of the rusting. Right, cast iron rust. Right. And you've got to really work to maintain it. Correct. You've got to keep it and that's what a lot of the cheap ones at Home Depot, because I've seen them like 200, 300 bucks. Right. I can't remember the brand names, but I've not seen an, a, 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 um, an enameled one. That's nice. And there's a drain for grease. These are cool. I mean, you know, of course, eggs and pancakes, but uh, watching Malman cook, he's doing marvelous. Uh, oh, you can do tons of stuff. All kinds of stuff with it. Tons of stuff on it. So I want to do more of it. I'm going to continue doing it with my gas grill and my uh, lodge griddle. Do you have um, cleanup kits like scrapers? And uh... Uh, I do. I actually have uh, over here we have just a small section. I don't have a, a huge section of it, but I would have like the you know Blackstone's uh, griddle seasoning kit, seasonings. And what then what is some... a griddle seasoning kit? Conditioner, seasoner and conditioner. For cast iron? Yeah, for the top that you can put on the top. Put some aside for me. You know, start a collection of stuff I need to buy. You know, and then just some of here's here's cleaning kits. So you got all your scrapers and your brushes and, and now stuff. one of the things Wallman does, he uses um this as a spatula. He actually has um plasterers yeah. um spatulas Plaster, that he uses. Yep. Big wide spatulas, mm -hmm. and that looked really smart. Or I got just the regular just a whole bunch of spatulas and scrapers. I see that's a scraper. Like a is, is there like a big spatula, a big wide? Oh, There's okay. No, I got spatulas. Like I need something really wide. I don't have anything super wide. I got I got really long. Yeah, I got one of those. And actually, I got one of these, and it's got holes in it, and it, I don't like the holes. I. I may have I put one of these aside for me, too. <laughs> you didn't know I was going to spend money here today. That's all right. Just take it from my speaker's feet. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, just a little bit about everything. <laughs> Hopefully get more. I hope, I'm hoping to expand it to some different areas. Uh, I'm going to start my little collection on this empty shelf right now. Um, I'm just kidding about the speaker's fee, folks. I don't charge a speaker's fee. Okay, Mike's switch is working. That's what everybody says. Cool. Um, so, I mean, I, I think, you know, we can officially restart again at 11 when uh, yeah. you announce the start time, but why waste these people's times? Now, spray duck fat. Mm -hmm. Have you? I bought some last time I was here. Did you use it? Uh, no. Um, what am I supposed to do with it? I bet it would be good on the griddle. You can spray it on your flat top. You can spray it on your grill. Anything you can basically use cooking oil. Um, Pam, um, olive oil, that now, kind of stuff. You could a lot of people spray their turkeys with it at Thanksgiving. Oh, um, they'll spray their uh, wings with it. That'll help crisp up the skin. It'll act as the binder. You can use a lot of the you know in the you know grilling like SCA and stuff like that. They'll use that. To, I think they even spray their steaks with it. SCA is Steak Cookers Steak Cook Association, a... and then they'll use that to even spray their grill grates uh, before they put the. Hmm. Put the steak on. Well, I, I have duck fat in a jar that I've collected from the last time I cooked duck. And, I, you know, duck fat french fries and uh, everybody raves about them. I don't find it all that exciting. What I like, which really I do find exciting, yeah. is bacon fat. I don't have bacon fat, but I got beef tallow. Beef tallow. I know they're using that a lot on um, briskets. Brisket. But I love bacon fat. I mean, I'll do um, stir fry. Now, all right, here's this is fun. You don't have a wok around here, do you? Ah, that's not a wok. Yeah, Put it well, back. It's a grilling wok. Uh, okay, okay. Oh yeah, okay. It's cast iron. I have a real. Uh, I have a real um, Chinese hammered um, uh, steel wok. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, what I do is, where's the charcoal chimney? This is cool. If you guys haven't tried this, this is really cool, fun stuff. There's the chimneys up there. Could you pull one down? Okay, uh, set it somewhere. Don't want to scratch anything. So I got a charcoal chimney. This is the Weber, same thing I've got. And what I did was I took my tin snips and I cut V-shapes in here. Because what happened, I, I put a wok on top. Oh, Get the okay. charcoal yeah, yeah, yeah. going, put a wok on top, 
And you know, you need high heat to do really good wok cooking stir fry. Yeah. And I have a gas stove inside, and it just doesn't get hot enough. Right. And so you put a wok on a charcoal chimney. You don't even have to fill it up about halfway. The problem is if you put it on here, um, airflow comes in from below, but it, it tends to snuff out the fire, or it's, if, especially if it's a long cook. Short cook, you're fine. So I just took some tin snips and cut some V-shaped holes in my... So it breathes. Yeah. So it breathes from the above. Mm -hmm. And man, it, th this is one fan. I mean, it's like being in a Chinese restaurant. I can really wok cook with these things. And it, it's just a, um, a uh, classic hammered steel wok you can buy in Chinatown. They're, they're cheap uh, and fantastic, just fantastic. They require care. You've got to maintain them like you would um, cast iron, but they're very cool. So... Wok cooking outdoors. It's absolutely fantastic. Okay. Following Steve around. Huh. Coming to check the time. I don't even know what time it is. Uh, oh, we got time. We got time. It's 10.38. What else uh, do we want to... Oh, look at what I see here. Yeah. You and I in a much, much younger state. Uh, with a flatter stomach, too. <laughs> <clears throat> Myron Mixon's books are good. That's about it. I just carry me head. Yeah. That's great. Appreciate it. Where do you see the new book? I'm really having fun with it. Oh, there's something else I need to buy. This stuff, Honey Barbecue. Okay, this, these guys, Cosmos, they must be like food scientists, chemists, or whatever. This stuff is a powder. And they, they're all different flavors. And I've tasted many of them. Last time I was here, I think I bought one of each. And they're good. But this stuff tastes like the stuff that's on barbecue potato chips. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it, it, I mean, I can eat this by the spoon. It's really good. Yeah. Um, what about try the one from, try the one from Croy Valley? What's that? Mango habanero wing. I see the word habanero when I run. I'm a wimp. I don't think it's that hot. It's not that hot? No, is it got a Parmesan garlic, too. Oh, that's interesting. Well, I may have to try one of those to the two, today, too. Um, so this Cosmos Q stuff is fun. I, there's a garlic parm, kicking Cajun, Buffalo, Buffalo Hot, Nashville Hot Chicken. They're flavorings. I, you can treat them like rubs, but the flavorings are really good. Hey, Steve, do you... Do you do you ship? I mean, you know, uh, well, Chef Beckman, for example, he lives near north side of Chicago, but uh, I'm giving away private information. I shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where Dan Manco Mancuso lives, um, where any of these guys live, but they're from all over the country. Um, well, we can. They'd have to, we don't have a true e-commerce site, so they'd have to contact us you know, via email. Uh, they can email me directly. I've shipped. I actually got a customer that's... Uh, uh, an Air Forceman that's actually in Germany that I ship stuff to. On a no kidding. Yeah. So, okay, there you go. Um, either that or make the trip out to uh, Wanamaker's. It'll take you right past the Ferrari store. You can stop off and pick up a Ferrari. Right. What's the other uh, fancy car yeah. store that I just passed? Oh, there's a, ben well, there's a Bentley a dealer. Bentley ship. dealer. There's, yeah, there's a lot of them down out Yeah, there. yeah. The, the nice come neighborhood. Go for a test drive, get a Bentley, and come shop at Wanamaker's. There you go. <laughs> T test drive to Wanamaker's. I love it. I love it. I got to try that. Um, so he, 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 he does carry my rubs and sauces, and here they are. He's got some pork left, and right there is the poultry, and right there is the red meat. So it looks like it's clipping along. Sold out. You better order. You know, I'm going to double my speakers for you if you don't order. A lot of people bought the poultry one for us. On Turkey. Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, um, in the barbecue world, when people compare purpose rub, this pork rub, that, mm -hmm. um, it's your basic um, paprika stuff in there. It's really good. I think it's better than most. But that's your basic all purpose rub chicken and pork. Oh, 
I, I'm, I'm more of a Frenchie. I, I want herbs, right, right. chicken and turkey. I want that herb flavor. And, uh, um, so I have a, uh, a poultry seasoning or a poultry rub, mm -hmm. which is green. And, uh, oh, you got a bottle in your gift yeah. cat. Okay. So you can see it's green and, uh, that's cause it's, uh, the, the, the core is similar to the recipe on my website for Simon and Garfunkel. Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. I can't sing. Uh, and, and that was so far out of tune. Uh, but in any case, that's, that's what I go for. Um, this stuff, I just bought some of that stuff from Milk Street. Um, this is really interesting. This is um, a... Uh, they call it a barbecue. It's more, more like a um, teriyaki, teriyaki sauce. sauce. Yeah. It's a soy base, and it's sweet, yeah. and it's thick, and it's really fun. Now, I can't remember which one of these three that I have, though. There's Hot one and I'm spicy. Of, yeah, there's one I'm out of, the, the yuzu I'm out of. Uh, this one's probably obviously the most popular. The original, I think that's the one the original's I have, the most yeah. popular. And what are the other two? Gluten-free, and then there's a hot and spicy. Okay, so I've got the right one. I've got the... I use that... Um, we subscribe to a service called Sitka Salmon Shares. Mm -hmm. And um, Sitka Salmon Shares is a monthly... <laughs> He's flirting with you guys. Well, it's, I'm the only one on. <laughs> Put the good-looking guy on TV. Yeah. I see it. Sitka Salmon Shares is a monthly uh, subscription. Mm -hmm. And I get five... And actually, I don't know if it's monthly. I think it may be every other month. I forget. I get five pounds of Alaskan fish, mm -hmm. um, sable, um, salmon, halibut, uh, rockfish, and it's all pristine. They have this incredible system. These are all line caught, small boat fishermen. Bring it in. They process it immediately. It's rapid freezing so that there's not any liquid. You open the, um, the vacuum bag and no liquid runs out. Hmm. never smells fishy um and uh we get this every once a month because here in the chicago area that's the biggest drawback to living in the chicago area is seafood i was raised on the coast of florida and uh um seafood is just you know i just adore seafood and uh um sitka salmon shares is uh, the solution we found it's fantastic and so we've been using this japanese barbecue sauce on our salmon and uh, it's really good. Um, what else do we have here that I'm familiar with? Suckle Busters. I haven't tried their stuff in a while, but I always thought that was pretty good stuff. Big Mo Cason. Hardcore Carnivore. Blues Hog. Okay. Now, Blues Hog has... Where's the... That's the original there. Mm -hmm. The Blues Hog original has become kind of the de facto taste profile, taste profile for, of the competition for, circuit. For KCBS, correct. Kansas City Barbecue Society, KCBS, um, competition barbecue circuit. They're the largest of the sanctioning bodies. Mm -hmm. And um, for some reason or other, the Blues Hog original, which is really heavy on um, um, uh, corn syrup, mm -hmm. um, not high fructose corn syrup, but it's regular corn syrup. And there's a huge difference, folks, by the way. Um, and, uh, it's got a lot of brown spices in it and, uh, I've come close to reverse engineering. I have something called Jazzy Hog on my website. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Not quite though. And this is really good stuff and you'll find it in the stores. It was sort of hard to find, but what a lot of the competition chefs do is they buy this and then they dock. They well, add a little something to it. That's why, we, that's why we carry it in a half gallons. A lot of the competition guys. Oh, there it is. A lot of competition guys will come in and grab the half gallons, and then they'll they make their own blend out of it. But they start with that; they get that profile to start with, and then they'll they'll doctor and add their own little stuff to it. And they got some new stuff coming out. That's what those empty holes are for. Yeah, unfortunately, um, Bill, the uh, guy who uh, created the original sauce, has died, and it got sold to another company. But they haven't changed the formula on the original. They'd be damn fools to do so. Uh, I'm looking here. Killer Hogs is another popular brand that's doing really well. Meat Mitch. Meat these guys are... I, these, like, I, like Mitch's, I, like, I like his wok sauce a lot. Uh, and then actually his hot is really good. It's got like a vinegar start to it, but it's got just a medium heat to it. And his mustard sauce is fantastic. Okay, I'm a mustard sauce fan. Mm -hmm. What do you like it on? Uh, I like 
putting it on a tenderloin or something like that. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, on steaks. No, well, okay. I'm, 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 I'm pork tenderloin. Oh, I'm, pork tenderloin. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. More to pork with of it. course, of yeah. course. Sure. What I don't know what I was thinking. Um, it's actually good with pretzels too. Yes. Well, that's I do that too. I put I I have some and I use it on pretzels. I've done pretzels. A sandwich, like a pastrami sandwich, and, or something like that. If you're not familiar, if you go to South Carolina, um, and I, I think it's partially due to the German influence, you know, that uh, mm-hmm. um, the mustard is real popular in Germany, especially with pork. Um, uh, m- many of the barbecue restaurants don't use a red barbecue sauce; they use a mustard-based sauce. And uh, I have recipes for it on my website. Um, you can make it from scratch, but there are a variety of them out there. And I like I really like it on pulled pork, okay. and that, and I I typically I reach for it for pulled pork. I'm not I don't normally put it on things like ribs or uh, um, anything like that. But it's really fun if you've never tried one. And I see he has a white sauce. Mm-hmm. That's a sauce that evolved in northern Alabama, um, Decatur, Alabama. In fact, is where uh, that originated, um, and uh, th- it, that's used for. What do you got? Oh, deuces. Deuces. I'm going to shake it up. Yeah. It separates after a while. Yeah. Um, they, um, at, um, what's the restaurant in Decatur? Bob, Bob Gibson's. Big Bob Gibson's. Uh, that was where it started. Big Bob was the guy who invented it. And I've been over there, and basically they have a bucket of it. Mm-hmm. And they have these chi- um, uh, chickens splayed open, <laughs> a butterflied, that they put on their smokers. And then they take them off and dunk them in this stuff. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And it's good. It works. It's sort of a, a mayonnaise base, uh, uh, reminiscent of, uh, what's that salad dressing that everybody loves? It's a ranch or a ranch. Yeah, it's kind of a ranch. I actually use it. It actually does make a good. I, I, we had that one time I brought a salad to work and I forgot uh, dressing. And we had one of these in the fridge upstairs in the break room. Um, it actually makes a good salad dressing. Say, after we're done here today. Salad dressing with a kick. Where are we going to lunch after we're done here? I don't know. Wherever uh, you want. There's a little hot dog stand down the block that looks tempting. I'm a hot Scoobies? dog fan. Yeah. Scoobies is supposed to be good. So how are we doing on time here? 1049. We're officially way ten way ahead of schedule here, guys. But, uh, I had to test their camera. Yeah, I had to test the camera. And so we're live. Um yeah, um, I'm just going to wander around and uh, keep uh, ad libbing here until uh, we get started, and uh, we're going to do more of this. But basically, that's the plan for today: is that uh, Steve and I are going to work the shelves and uh, oh, look at that! <laughs> they really, yeah, I'm not kidding. The candy store. Um, look at this spatula. Now that oh, and it's sharp. That's cool. Yeah, it's part of Traeger's, Traeger's line. Really? Look at that. I don't know if you can see. It's very sharp, which you want. You need to get under things that are stuck. Man, that is... I'm afraid to look at the price. 50 bucks. Get out. Yeah. 32. No, 50. 32. No, that's the thing below. That's the injection. Oh. 49. Oh, my God. Well, it's got Traeger's name on it. These guys really have uh, it's a nice rosewood handle too. Oh, rosewood handle. That's what I need. I'll put it put it over here as a maybe. I, I, we'll see. That's a, it's in the maybe section. Yeah, yeah. Now these this is interesting. I, uh, so this, this is all like Traeger stuff. Boy, so they most really of, most of this is Traeger. These are replacement bristles. They ran out of space over there. So that actually goes to their uh, that actually goes to their brush over here. Now, I've got something like this. So that as it wears out, you can just replace the head on it. I've always been hesitant to buy one of these because I always figure they're going to go out of business and, and, and then I won't be able to get the replacements. But that looks nice. So this is an important factor here, though. The bristles are they're planted in plastic. Yeah. And there have been a number of cases of bristles coming out of brushes and getting onto the grill grates. And once they get on the grill grate, they get on your hamburgers or your steaks. And then Granny comes over for 4th of July and you spend the rest of the day in the uh, emergency room. Uh, so you got to be careful when you select a, uh, a brush that the bristles are fastened very tightly. Now, you can't really see the brush here, 
But this one, the Weber, you can see maybe from the picture, the bristles are inside of a twisted metal. Mm -hmm. And that, that's pretty reliable too. Um, just make sure the bristles are in good. Um, I've seen them in cheap wooden ones. You got a sample of a cheap wooden one? Of course you don't. I don't have, I got a cheap plastic one. But yeah. same different. You probably get more. But I would probably get... trust that. Yeah, I don't have any of the cheap wooden ones. Good, good. There's a man with integrity here. <laughs> Haven't been called that in a while. Yeah. Now here he's got these um, basting mops. I'm not fond of these. Um, I, I don't recommend them because I don't think you can ever get them perfectly clean. I think they're a, a food safety hazard. I think that uh, you get uh, um, sauce and uh, basting liquids in there and it, it, you just can't ever get it. And you, don't, you can't throw it in the washing machine. So I don't, I don't recommend those. If you're going to, you got um, silicon brushes. There you go. That's what you baste with. That's actually from ThermoWorks, believe it or not. Oh yeah. So these are, see, silicon. And I don't know if you can see through, but there's a lot of gaps between the bristles. And I'm just starting to look. My husband- They load up with sauce. So you, you get a lot of sauce in them. So this is my favorite. That's nice, nice. I like that long handle too. I've got a bunch of these short handled ones. This is something I like. This is like a, a Teflon coated material. You can't get it too hot. You can't put it over. But for a smoker, um, it's flexible, you see. But it's a very fine mesh. And so things like um, chopped onions. I do smoke nuts on them. Grill toppers are an important thing to have. Um, boy, Weber really does hide their products, but this is a Weber grill topper, and it's nice. Marcus says on that spatula you have that it's a great spatula to buy. Oh, yeah? So you got the, the, the audience is now selling me up. <laughs> that you're, you're talking about that $50. I'm assuming so. I don't know when he commented in. So I don't who, know who, who is it? Marcus. Yeah, okay. Well, I may have to get one. Um, if you don't like it, get the Max. <laughs> Max, Max is well equipped. Um, so let's see. Oh, we were talking about grill toppers. Okay. And I'm a, I've got a pretty good variety of them. Now, this is a nice way to do a grill topper. It's sort of like a um, frying pan or a wok shape. See, it's got holes in it. Um, and it's um, enameled. And this is a good way to do shrimp, veggies, um, beans, string beans. Um, I, I mean, I'll take an onion and cut rings out of them and toss them in there. Um, and my new book's got a lot of stuff that you need to cook with a grill topper. Um, here's another shape from Weber and it's stainless. It's, they get, the, they get dirty after a while and pretty hard to clean sometimes. What do you uh, recommend Steve for, um, cleaning a really dirty stainless steel grill top? You know, it, 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 it they burn, you know, you, 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 you I paint them with oil. I throw onion rings or beans on stuff on there, and after three or four uses, they're they're covered with carbon. You try. I mean, a Traeger's got an all-natural grill brake cleaner. You try that. Let it soak on there. Well, I don't care if it's natural or not. I just want to get I my damn thing I just clean. I don't like chemicals in there. Well, I mean, I, I clean it off. Let that there and let it soak on it and see if that eats some of it. Otherwise, it's all right. Gonna have some weird all right, let's try one. It. Let's try one. <laughs> That, you know, don't get me started here. All natural. What is natural? I, I got to read this label here. Let me put my glasses on because, you know, first of all, in, in the case of food, the word natural is not, has almost no legal definition. Non-chlorinated water, corn, tree sap, yeah. cinnamon oil, and garlic. Now, cinnamon oil garlic now it's a clear liquid 
So how do they get tree sap, tree sap corn, cinnamon oil, and garlic into a clear liquid? That, that stuff is heavily processed. That's a question for trade. That's got to be. I mean, it's heavily processed. You, I mean, <laughs> you, you got to process it. You got to make it somehow. How's our timing? We're three minutes till start. Three minutes till start. Yeah. Well, I'm going to clam up for a minute. Hey, Chef Steph. This is Chef Steph. She's a very talented chef, particularly uh, good at um, sous vide and griddling. Put your microphone on so that we can put it in your pocket. Okay. Turn your All right. So, uh, hang on with us. We're supposed to start at 11, and we got started 30 minutes early. So we're just, uh, I'm broadcasting to my network. Joint, joint. Uh, <clears throat> you got joints? It would make the show better. This is Illinois, folks. I mean, that stuff's legal. It's legal here. It's, it's legal, legal here. All right, I'm just going to sit up. I'm trying to get set up here so that we can do uh, a dual, dual, do a, dual, dual show. Dual, because Steve's got his network show that, got show that we do every week i can't tell which one i look better on i think neither of us is a choice a board we're not going to win people's, no, people's no, choice award. No. okay it's uh, 10 58 so we're counting down till 11 o'clock official start and uh actually no, i'm going to start mine and we'll get the see if we can get some How's my audio on your system? Where, where are you we broadcasting to? Uh, this is going to uh, Wanamaker's Barbecue, uh, BBQ and Smoke Supply on Facebook. That's the, uh, the grilling department's uh, Facebook page. So, so you have a, Wanamaker's has a Facebook page. Just for the grilling department. We also have Wanamaker's Home and Garden, which will do the whole store, uh, which this will get shared to eventually. It does the... Uh... Hey, Craig. Craig is from L.A. Say hello to L.A. Hello, L.A. Craig, can you hear us okay? Is it is the audio coming in? I know we're close to the thing. So we're kind of doing a joint joint simulcast here on two different two different networks here, which is kind of a first here for the show. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm broadcasting to Facebook.com slash Amazing Ribs and YouTube.com slash Amazing Ribs. Um, and I think we're also on LinkedIn. And uh, maybe also Twitter. Uh, uh, I've got all this fancy gear. I don't know where the hell it is. It's going out. It's going out there. I don't know. I can't see the time. I can right. tell you. It's 11 o'clock sharp. 11 Let's get rolling. All right, everybody. This is live from the barbecue department at Wanamakers. I am Steve Kress. I am the grill department manager here at Wanamakers. And today I am joined by my good friend and customer, barbecue hall of famer, Eda. I'm his good friend because I'm a customer. Because I'm a customer. <laughs> I spend money here. <laughs> see the we are doing kind of, uh, and we're also just kind of, a, it's kind of a first. I know we were just talking about it a little bit. We are coming to you live from the uh, Wanamaker's BBQ and Smoke Supply page on Facebook. But we're also coming to you also on AmazingRibs.com uh, on that Facebook page and also on their YouTube page. So, Mita, that's, uh, thank you for uh, doing the simulcast. Look at this nice lady buying all yeah, stuff. Yeah, buying stuff. If, if, if you need a hand with that heavy bag there. Nah, I got it. I'm she got it. <laughs> Customer here, customers here are tough. They're yeah, tough. strong here. Right? So, one of, one of, I, if, for to, for my audience who doesn't know Wanamakers, mm -hmm. Wanamakers is maybe I don't know five miles, seven miles from my house. Correct. And mm -hmm. uh, it's in a little uh, suburb of Chicago called Downers Grove, which is a very nice suburb. And it's a garden store, if you will. Is that a fair way to approach it's officially, it? It's, it's officially a garden center. Uh, the grilling department actually takes up the uh, back corner of the store. It has a uh, pretty good persona by itself. It's it's grown a lot, and Meathead's been coming here for a while, so he's known it. It's grown a lot in the last uh, seven or eight years, uh, trying to get everybody the best selection they can possibly get. And then uh, I think we're, we're doing pretty good at it. I, we're pretty close to, to having a pretty decent place. Oh yeah, it's I, I, we, we got a rolling start here. If, if you're just getting here on time at eleven o'clock, I brought my laptop and camera from home, and everything's kind of new, and so I got to start about thirty minutes earlier. But what the plan for the day is is 
Um, we're going to wander around Steve's uh, department here, and I think you, I see you've got I got some a pile of gifts here, so we didn't have to walk too much. Hey, there's Adam. There's that gentleman I was talking to you about. Adam is, uh, hey, Vito, and Vito is also a customer of the store. Uh, Adam is actually a uh, Air Forceman in uh, Germany, so it's kind of late in the day for him. So, wow. Adam, good to see that you made it on the show today. Thank you for your service. Yep, he's a, he's a great guy. They, they just bought a bunch of stuff. They're going to have a contest. And he, Excellent. He, he does a lot of cooking, and he'll ask for advice every now and then. So it's, it's great to have customers all over the world. So one of the fun things about this place is he, he sells a pretty nice range of grills and smokers and griddles and all that stuff, but he's got everything in the way of accessories rubs and sauces now i was asking him earlier if they do e-commerce and shipping and he he says he can but they're really not set up for that right so you, you if you're ever in the midwest in chicago area you want to pop in and see it um uh, but uh uh i think you know if there's something you absolutely have to have and you can't get it anywhere else He'll probably make an effort to get it to you. I'll get it to you. You can always email me. You can do, uh, it's, uh, it's Steve K at Wanamakers.com. You can always shoot me an email. We can converse back and forth and try and find what's the best way to get it to you. But uh, yeah, we've shipped things. Uh, I've had shipped things to Ohio. I ship to Indiana on a regular basis to a restaurant out there. Uh, my good friends at Lucille's Barbecue buy it quite a bit. So they'll, they, I ship to there and then I have shipped stuff other places. So it's uh, just a good old fashioned retail store. Uh, the, from the good old days, and uh, um, I, uh, I was, I, I've got my, my I'm, I'm mobile here, mobile. and uh, mobile too. you can see the store is, is, is huge, and in summer it's filled with lawn furniture and umbrellas, and now of course it's all trees and Christmas tchotchkes, and uh, we'll walk around the barbecue department together in a few minutes. What I do want to point out today, uh, as we usually normally do once in a while, but uh, I do want to point out, uh, you can see the big banner hanging behind me. I am wearing my Operation Barbecue Relief shirt today. Today is Giving Tuesday, um, so if you do get a chance, please go to Operation Barbecue Relief and make a donation. And uh, if you can, set it up on Amazon as your as your smile, smile beneficiary. That would be fantastic. Uh, we did close up shop down there in Port Charlotte, doing a few things around the Chicago area. Uh, because the last time we talked, uh, I had just gotten back from Port Charlotte, uh, in Port Charlotte, Florida for Hurricane Ian, uh, Operation Barbecue Relief provided 865,000 meals and probably about 38 days. Um, for, for those of you who don't follow Steve as closely as my followers, my fans, if you're not familiar with Operation Barbecue Relief, we talk about it on AmazingRibs.com. We have been donating to them every month automatically since the day they were founded, which was what? Eight, ten years ago. 2011. 2011. So uh, um, we send them a check every month. This is an extraordinary operation. It began as a couple of guys um, in Missouri, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a tornado in Joplin, and they were barbecue competition guys, and they had this big trailer and mobile kitchen that they cooked in competitions with, and they packed up and went down to Joplin and started grilling and smoking barbecue. And it was extra. I mean, everybody loves barbecue. And when your house has just been flattened, or if you're a fireman or a, uh, a, a cop or a first responder of any sort, a pulled pork sandwich just tastes wonderful. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it just blossomed and it grew. And they now have a fleet of trucks. Mm -hmm. Um, they now have um, massive tents. Um, just it's it's a just a massive feeding system. And when there's a tornado or a Hurricane Ian, mm -hmm. um, they show up and they feed. And uh, I tell you, if your life has been turned upside down, um, a free barbecue sandwich. Uh, and um, you know, not to cast dispersions on anyone, but. Uh, um, there are relief organizations that serve peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and that, 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 that's welcome, I'm sure, but not to compare with a barbecue sandwich. Barbecue, and, uh, barbecue always tastes better. Steve has been an active supporter, and he, you can see he's got Banner here promoting it. He went down to Fort Myers mm -hmm. and spent three weeks, right, yeah. mm -hmm. three weeks off, off the payroll, 
Well, I'm back to my vacation. Well, okay, vacation. he took his personal vacation, vacation time. Yeah, exactly. took his personal vacation time from his job, and spent three weeks volunteering down mm -hmm. there, feeding. What a mensch! Yeah, no, it's a good. Uh, a lot of good people down there. I see Mike Lip uh, was on. Uh, I saw him pass up that he was watching. He was down there as well. There, I'm, actually, I was actually kind of uh, excited that uh, there was a lot of people from the Chicago area that were down there this time. Usually, it's always. Uh, I'm one of the few. Uh, I know Lori Pollock does a lot of it, so she's down there usually all the time, but it's usually just her and I. But uh, this time there were quite a bit of people from the Chicago area, so uh, that's kind of a nice thing to see that uh, maybe people are listening up here and getting to know Barbecue Relief a little bit better and, and signing up to volunteer, which is which is, is a fun thing. Or to just do. go to their website and donate. Or donate. Hey, um, shall we... Get down to uh, some of our favorite toys. And favorite, that's what the show's all about. Today. Let's do we're it. Gonna pick, we're going to pick our favorite things that you can use for Christmas, Christmas gifts, just little gadgets, this, that. We'll kind of do a couple different price ranges and this and that. So it's uh, the store has quite a little bit of everything that you can. So you can you can touch on a little bit of just about anything that you're looking for. It's, it's probably here. Well, I, I see right on top of your little stash here little a stash. couple of my favorite things. Um, you want to talk uh, thermometers? Let's talk thermometers. I mean, I, my mm. wife just retired from the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, and she once told me sure. that she thought that AmazingRibs.com probably um, is responsible for more kitchen thermometers than the FDA. Um, we don't sell any. We recommend them. And we have an electrical engineer who actually tests them. We've got special devices. He can insert the probe in and tell how accurate it is how long it takes to get an accurate reading, and then he cooks with it, and uh, I test them uh, just uh, in the field. I don't have the special device, it's the measure. And uh, we have uh, something like 200 digital thermometers in a database on AmazingRibs.com, and we don't sell any of them, so you can go there and we'll link you to places where you can buy them. But he's just handed me my new all-time favorite. I, that's why I handed it. I knew it was his all-time favorite. You can take it out of the package. I can? Too, so, yeah. So I, I didn't know some. you carried him. Uh, I, I, yeah, so I think actually some. when I talked to you, you didn't until you... Uh... Right. Uh, Meathead came to... Uh, we had hosted Mark Lambert back here in, in February for a class, and Meathead came to the class, and, and he was telling me about uh, the fireboard spark, uh, that I should carry the fireboard stuff. So I, I, I did do that, and... Uh, I'm not going to take it all the way out of its packaging. It yeah, it's more oh. fun that way. Just well... Here, I'll pull it out of the package. Here, I'll pull it out of the package. Yeah. Come on, King Robert. Okay. Come. I don't want to destroy his packaging. Fireboard is this company out of Kansas City, and they make uh, a couple of really high-tech, state-of-the-art thermometers, and they're the most expensive out there. Um, but this one has just come out this year. It's called the Fireboard Spark, and um, it's it, it, you know it's, it's similar to the Thermapen in that it folds up and it has a, a, a long probe. It's very fast, very sensitive, um, it's got a very bright display, although I have had trouble reading this bright display in really bright sunlight. It's not great in really bright sunlight, um, but it, it, it's great, particularly in the kitchen. My wife loves it in the kitchen, and um, it's just a really first, and notice, I uh, turn it upside down, The uh, it's supposed to turn too. Oh, 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 that's a, he's got, a, that's you got a the decal screen, you on it. got the screen saver on it. Yeah, yeah, it's got a decal on it. Um, but um, it, it, it's interesting in that, if you lift the back end, there's a plug where you can insert a probe on a cable. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, these are thermocouples, which are the most accurate probes. And uh, you can insert a, a K probe, a thermocouple. And so it will both instant read mm -hmm. or you can insert it into a turkey breast or pork butt. And uh, now they're not cheap. What do you sell it for? Uh, I want to say it's 149. 149. Off the okay. Top of my head, which is now the thermopan, which is what it competes with, and uh, and you carry those, and here it is. This They're is, 100 bucks, aren't they, or something? This like one's that? around 100 bucks. This is actually the newest, the latest, and greatest one. This one is the uh, thermal pen one. So this will give you the reading, and this will give you the reading in one second. I'll peel the little safety tab off of there, but I don't know if you can see it. But yeah, as you rotate it, the 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 uh, temperature will go around. It's big thing is obviously the one second, um, but it also gives you to where you can do, you can fold the probe up. Similar to that, um, the nice thing I do like about the after Meathead showed me the spark, the thing that I really liked about the spark is that you can get that multiple function out of it where you can use it as an instant read or 
that standalone uh, with the meat probe on it. So right, and, so and basically getting two for so the one forty nine you're getting basically two for one. There you go, and 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 a st standalone with a with a probe on a cable is a really nice idea, mm -hmm. um, uh, because that the, well okay here we go. Uh, Meatheads on the move. On the move. On the move. Where's uh? Where I'm looking. Here we go. All right, now, you can't say anything bad about Weber Grills because they just have been, have been around forever. But here's their probe. Now, this is a metal probe, and it's in the hood. Here's the tip of the probe, and it's bimetallic. It's a, it's a technology that was invented 100 years ago, more than 100 years ago. It's two pieces of metal that expand at different rates, not 100% accurate, and it's in the dome. But your food is down here. So you want to measure the temperature on the surface. So if you've got yourself a, uh, a chicken sitting down here or chicken pieces, you want your probe clipped to the surface so it's feeling the same temperature as the meat. And when it's up here, well, hot air rises. Um, on some smokers, it's up near the vents. Um, it's not getting the same temperature. You can't rely on it. So uh, really is a good idea. Um, I'm going to just keep rolling here and I'm going to drive you and everybody crazy. <clears throat> but if you don't want to buy the spark, here we go. We're back in the thermometer department. You can get thermometers like the dot here, which has a probe. Can't see a picture of it, but it has a probe on a cable. And this is not terribly expensive. It's 43 bucks and it has a probe on a cable. So you can clip that to the um, uh, grill or insert it into your roast or your turkey. Here's what those cables look like. Um, and this is the fireboard cable. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the, and here's the fireboard spark that we were just showing you. Um, so uh, this is the thermopen for 105 mm -hmm. plus this for 42. So now you're at the same price as this yep. all by itself. Yep. So it's not outlandish. No. And they're both one second reads um, and uh, pretty impressive. Um, I don't think there's anything you can do that will improve your cooking than buying good thermometers. Um, I'm guessing that since you folks are here, you're into barbecue and grilling, you've heard that story before and you probably have good thermometers. So we probably don't need to dwell on them too much. Although I noticed you did bring up. I did bring out a thermal pot. Yeah, it, is sure. this the new model or is this the, uh, the old? I think model? it's probably still the older model. Well, the older model was a damn nice probe and it's cheap. Yeah. 35 bucks. That's kind of cute. Looks like a lollipop. And uh, it, it, it's about five seconds to read. Mm -hmm. And in general, the slower they are to read, the cheaper they are. Correct. So um, that's a really nice device for, you know. And I actually, I they, they were uh, I just bought oh, I, uh, from from Thermoworks from the manufacturer. That's all right. They went on sale last week. They do that a lot. And yes, they do. And I just bought a dozen of them because I give them away. You know, uh, the guy comes and repairs my uh, my my furnace, and he notices all the grills, and we start talking. And I and I say, you know, you, you got a good thermometer? No, here here, take this one. <laughs> um, so. What else did you have that you want to show off, or do you uh, want to just wander? No, like we can just wander now. We can just we can just wander around. We can kind of do a switch me back. To... Where do you want to start? Well, I mean, we did the thermometers. You know what? It, it, well, let's go back to. You opened up that Weber, and, and as you said, I like, saw the grill grates. When you saw the grill grates on the Weber, so let's go over here. I got I got the great selection of uh, grill grates. I got stuff over because I was just kind of staging stuff for. Uh, yeah, the grill grates are fantastic. Fantastic. On their grill. Oh, here he comes. He's bringing the plate over. Um, basically, what they are, are anodized aluminum plates that fit over. If you have a Weber, they usually have ones that fit exactly on the Weber. If not, uh, they'll sit right on top of the grates just perfectly. Uh, so that you can use them on you know, Traeger. You can use them on, on Napoleons. You can use them on just about any grill. They are a fantastic gift. Uh, the big thing with them is they're going to amplify your grate temperature, uh, so you're going to you're going to be able to increase that temp temperature so that you can sear really well. Especially those of you that have the Traegers and stuff like that 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 can't really get up into that true searing temperature. This will help you get to that temperature. Um, the other big benefit of it too is is the aluminum 
will uh, disperse the heat a little bit more evenly than, than steel will. So you'll get a nice, a, a more even, uh, this is a kind of a nice little view. You're holding, me, me holding this. Yeah, this we're, we're like we're like we're like a, a shooting yeah. match. I'm shooting yeah. him, and he's shooting me. Uh, Freaking frack here. Right. So uh, it'll give you a more even cooking surface, which is kind of nice uh, to have. So you know that you're going to get a more even cook on just about everything you're cooking. So and the other, the other interesting aspect, hard to see here, but they're interlocking, so you can link them together and they can fit. And I, this is something that I discovered that the manufacturer didn't know about. Yeah. Flip them over, you can cook on the back and you have a griddle. And you can do burgers on here. And now smoke will still reach the meat. It's not like a flat top griddle that is solid. You'll get smoke coming up. So on things like a Traeger or a smoker, you'll get the smoke coming through. And uh, he had them on this weather here. And uh, you can see. You guys got fans in the house. Uh-oh. Oh, geez. There we go. They link together. And that's so... A, that's actually the full set. That, I mean, someone... I, we misplaced the piece, but yeah, that's actually a full set for, uh, for a Weber Genesis. Nice. Really nice. Useful tools. Not terribly expensive. Um, they do amplify the temperature. They get rid of hot spots. Um, and there, here's something else I discovered that the manufacturer didn't know about. Um, I take a handful of pebble, uh, pebble, bleh. pebbles, pebbles, <laughs> rocks, you're putting rocks on the grill. Oh, geez. Um, pellets, uh, Traeger pellets or any of the pellets or, um, uh, wood chips and you throw them and they get in between these, um, rails. These are rails. I think you can see, and they get in between here and I do fish that way because fish cook so fast. It's not on the, the grill very long. And, and so um, you get the grill cranked up, you throw some pellets on here, they start smoking, and you're in very close proximity to the smoke. Right. And I did um, some um, Chilean sea bass, which if, if you probably know, is a very white flesh fish. And after three, four minutes on either side, it turns golden, and it has just the right amount of smoke. It's delicate. I really like these things, really highly recommend them. Not terrible, what's that section like this cost? Uh, I have to look off the top of my head. I want to say like one sixty, maybe for the whole unit or just one panel no, for the whole for the whole set. Okay, for a whole set, one panel is. I'm gonna go over here and zoom over here because I can I can tell you right up. And you can get them custom cut to fit whatever grill you 160, got. One sixty four for the full set. Okay, for the for the for, for that, the Weber Genesis. We, all right, so that's four of them or something like that. Five. Five of them. Okay. Nice tool. Where do you want to go next? We'll go meet your fan. Oh, we. we <laughs> You came on live this morning and I was heading out to pick up some uh, some pellets. And I said, well, what the hell? I'll take a ride and pick up some pellets over here. Good to meet you. you know, Ted, Ted, cool. Ted, good to meet you, Ted. Yeah. Uh, did they ever ever figure out, did Traeger ever admit to having dipping them in, in oil? I think they, that's yeah. their technique. I think it's a flavored oil. That's a flavored oil. I, don't, I think they mix it in with the pellets. Is it, is it an oak pellet that they're dipping it in? I think so. I think or oak. The, the bags are usually, uh, I want to say they're a 60-40 mix. Uh, I think this side of the Mississippi, I want to say it's oak. And then the other side the other is side alder. Or something like that. I think in general, I've talked to the manufacturers of these things. And they say oak is the easiest pellet to feed through the machine, and it's the easiest to make. It's it it, it compared because they don't put any glue or anything in them to make the, the pellet. Resin, it's just yeah. compressed, right, from its own resin. So I think they generally think oak is the best pellet. Um, so my gut instinct is is that what we're getting at here is it's it, Traeger apparently gets flavor into the pellets by putting a flavored oil in the mix. And there were some people who took objection to that. Right, because um, it doesn't say 100%. Uh, you know, yeah, I know yeah, that, there was a lawsuit around it. That's I don't when know where Rempy brought it up. And, yeah, you know, yeah. And, and oh, was, you were hardcore. You listened to oh, Rempy. I've been watching you for years. Oh, buddy. my God. Uh, you know. I'm, Might be I'm, the only one, but he's been listening. I'm, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I was on, you know, and it came on Meatheads Live, and I was heading out, and I said, well, let's take a ride. Oh, oh geez. Good, Good to see well, you. See, where do you live? I live in Bridgeview. Oh, okay. Oh, you're a little bit of a hike. Yeah, I took a little hike. Okay, you know, I'm in. I'm in Brookfield. That's what you do when you're retired. 
Yeah. He said, what are you going to do? I'm going to take a ride. Okay. I live in Brookfield. Yeah, uh, I know. Yeah. So yeah. it's just around yeah. the corner. I watch your live things. On do you the carry Thursdays. other brands of pellets besides Traeger? Uh, I do have some over here. I got B&B. I got their, their 40 pound championship blend. Oh, there you I go. got, uh, that, that's, yeah, that's, then I got Royal Oaks, uh, underneath all of our stuff. Do there. I have charcoal. Royal Oaks. Is any, any pros or cons on the charcoal flavor? I brought Royal in that, well, I brought in the Royal Oak because uh, that I, I've heard is one of the better of the charcoal flavored ones. I know there's a yeah. lot of people that do like them. I haven't cooked with it personally yet. You know what? I'll, I'll, you know, I'll probably, I'm going to take a bag of each, you know? You know, I have never, all right, you, you, what do you got, a Traeger? Or? I got a, no, I got a Rectech. For a about, Rectech? A 640 for about seven years now. Yeah, okay, you know, with I the mean, bull's horns on it. bull's horns. I like that machine. Yeah, I mean, I got no issues. We gave it very it. high ranking. You know, a hot rod got to replace, and, and I just did a ham for Thanksgiving. And I cleaned it all out, and it's going to be a nice day today, so I thought I'd vacuum it out, mm -hmm. and then, uh, you know, it's totally 100% out of pellets, and I mm -hmm. usually, you know, I'm totally out. Usually got two two bags here, a bag mm -hmm. there. Do you but, notice a big difference in flavor between the different pellets? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Uh, cherry, I can a, smell it, but I don't taste color, it. You get a better color. Hickory, you get a stronger smoke, mm -hmm. I think. I think. You know, like I said, they got the blend. He's got the blend here from the yeah, B&B. That's B&B's &B. championship. That's yeah. Actually, that's actually a pretty decent price. That's I mean, uh, and that one, I believe, is uh, post oak, what, post oak cherry and, and uh, pecan. Cherry's good, pecan. pecan. Yeah, okay, so these are for, um, in case there's somebody out there doesn't know what we're talking about. These go into things like Traeger and Mac and Rectech you know, and others. You, you and, got a Mac, right? Yeah, I have a Mac. I know. Oh, yes. Yeah. Right. And and they burn these, and it's pure wood. In the case of the Traegers, there's some flavoring added. Right, that's what and I think some of the others actually have been adding dried herbs to them and such. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's burning wood. Yeah, it keeps and it's a very good. mild. Right. It's a very mild smoke flavor. Texans always complain it's not a strong enough flavor. Right, well, um, because right. they're used to burning logs. I did that ham, and I didn't put you know any extra pellets in it. Just with the with the hey, right. machine did. Sure. Sure. Turned sure. out great. Sure. You know? Great. Great. Well, okay. So, yeah. and, but I like them for um, seasoning. I mean, I throw them on my gas grill. I throw them on the. Um, yeah, uh, I got the tube. Uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, the tube. There's yeah, a tube yeah. that you can you throw, throw them in into. It, throw it in the tube. So yeah. it's a great way to get smoke flavor. Yeah, quick, easy. And it's a very mild flavor. It's not a very strong flavor. Right. Is, is he selling your rubs here? So too? we mentioned. Uh, we mentioned Traeger. I can't walk out of here without. Him. Which one? Which one you want? Well, He's trying to buy your rubs. Without you're getting some. Away. Yeah, getting yeah some except we only have one left. Because somebody ran out of stock on them. No, well, I mean, you don't got kind, none in your truck. I got a no, the, no, kind of the salesman the kind of demos. Purchase a lot of them. <laughs> Which one were you looking for? I got, I got, I got one meat one left. I got one pork one. I'm on poultry one left. And I got tons of pork. Here's the yeah. Here's the pork and the well, saucer right here. Ribs going next week. Give me the pork. There you go. See, it out I well. like it. It's good. See, yeah. you, well, you I'll, all right. You sound hardcore. You've have you tried the uh, Memphis dust recipe on my yeah, website? Yeah, I made it. It's very similar. I made it. Yeah. You know, yeah. We've got some smoke flavor on the um, on the rub. Yeah. And it's got salt in it. Right. Well, it's you know yeah. I've been trying to you know I've been doing your thing. Salt first mm -hmm. and, and let it go for a day or two. Uh, right? Don't need to do that with that. And, and then just you know. Then you know, try to find one without salt. Yeah, which, no, you can't. Which is hard. You can't because unless you make your own. You have to make your own because salt is cheap. And if if I made it without salt, I'd be priced out of the market. I get it. Right. Right. right yeah. Right. I, uh, well, he's talking about rubs and sauces. Let's take a look at because this guy has the hugest selection I've ever seen. Um, let me squeeze yeah. past you, if I may. During the um, warm up to the show here, I was showing. I was showing the audience the uh, Cosmos, and uh, this is really interesting stuff. I don't know that I want to call it a rub. Um, it's more of a flavoring. Um, I've got some of this. I've got several of these here, and I was telling Steve, this honey barbecue, it tastes like the stuff that's on barbecue potato chips, and I can eat it by the spoonful. It's just, and it's really rich and intense. Very strong flavor, and they got salt and vinegar, and it tastes just like salt and vinegar potato chips. Um, and it's just really intense, and you can throw it on a on a on a mashed potato, on vegetables, on your uh, pork uh, chops, whatever. I really like that um, honey barbecue flavor a lot, and he's carrying rubs and sauces from most of the top manufacturers out there. I mean, there's Mo Kason, 
Uh, Blues Hog, we talked about that earlier, and let me just cover that again in case you missed it. Blues Hog, their original, which is set back here, <clears throat> is a flavor profile that is really popular with competition cooks. And many of them buy the Blues Hog, and then they'll doctor it slightly. They'll add a little more of this or a little less of that. I took a couple first places. Of blues. Have you? Oh, so you compete? Nah, just... Like yeah. What's my friend, uh, my friend Robert Palmer said he uses the Royal Oak. He said it's got good flavor and it burns a little hot. Yeah. There you go. So I'll you're gonna try. It. I got a couple, couple slabs you know, for the weekend. I'm gonna get going. You taking off? I'll, I'll stick. I'll around. stick around. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm little, Join the party. Pitch in whenever you. Do a little window shot. We're just, there, right? we're just, we're just, we're just, we're just, we're just and oh, you, 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 Japanese. I heard so Yes. Much about we were talking about this. Yeah, I've got some of this. What? What? It's like a teriyaki sauce. It's slightly sweet. And um, it's it's thick. It's not as thick as most barbecue sauces. And I've been using it on salmon. Which is it's good. really good. This is the one that I have. I haven't tried the other two. And uh, I it like it a lot. Hot and spicy? Yeah, I haven't tried it yet. I haven't tried a hot and there spicy. There you go. Before. Okay, so he's a hot Original, and spicy guy. obviously, is the, the most popular sauce. Yeah. yeah. But it's um, I'd, I'll put it on salmon. And uh, um, it, 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 it's just... Of soy base, so it's, yeah. it's very got a very Asian flavor. I heard, yeah, I heard good things. Yeah, I try that. Is it only Whole Foods had it or something? Or? Um, I, I, I bought it you from know, uh, Milk right Street, oh. MilkStreet.com. Yeah, okay. uh, that's Christopher Kimball's website. Right, right, yeah. And uh, that's I didn't know he had it here. Otherwise, I would have come and gotten it here. Head countries, that's old school stuff. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Head country. That's good stuff. And I'll tell you, that's head country here. Yeah. That's who makes. Bottle look familiar? Oh, right. Oh, there you go. The head country makes my sauce. You're in with good people. And if you taste them, you'll notice some similarities. Well, give me one of your sauces. What oh, the heck? What am I please do. Yeah. I've had a lot of people say they like it better than Take head country. Well, the poultry one, I think, is... We is... stock up for the winter. We may be snowed in for a month, so we got to oh, get Yeah, it right. Yeah. We got to get it all Right. <laughs> Um, so what else we got here? We got Killer Hogs. That's Malcolm Reed. Um, Mike, if, Lip, uh, Mike Lip wants to know what we uh, what rub we recommend for jerky. You know, I haven't made jerky in a long time, but I'll bet this Japanese stuff would, go good on would really, because Asian and teriyaki type flavors are really good on jerky. Mm -hmm. And I, that's not a rub, that's a sauce. sauce. But it would penetrate, um, and you might consider that. Just do a sauce instead of the rub. Yeah. You might get a lot yeah. enough flavor from the teriyaki Well, you're going to cut it real thin. Mm -hmm. All right, here's an important thing to remember. Um, um, rubs and sauces don't penetrate very far. Mm -hmm. They'll get into the cracks and the pores and the crevices on the surface of meat. They may go a sixteenth of an inch deep. But if you think about it, you can... You can stick your turkey in a brine bath with apple cider and black pepper and garlic. And when you cut into that breast and you get down past a half inch, you're just tasting turkey. Mm -hmm. It doesn't penetrate. Salt will penetrate. It's the only thing that will penetrate. Garlic, uh, pepper, all that stuff. None of it can get past the surface. So if you've got a big fat thing like a turkey breast... It's not going to get very deep in there. But if you've got a very thin slice like jerky, which is, you know, so you're taking rump or something like that, and you're cutting it thin, quarter inch thin, and then it's going to shrink. Soak that in a marinade like this Japanese barbecue sauce here. And it, even if it only goes a sixteenth of an inch from either side, that's an eighth of an inch out of a quarter of an inch thickness. It's penetrating halfway. And then it's shrinking on cooking. You're getting a pretty high percentage of penetration. So for jerky, um, a, a marinade makes a lot of sense. For something like a pork loin or tenderloin or turkey breast, doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay, what else is we we got here? I meant I started to mention um, where where is it? Oh, killer hogs. Uh, that's a uh, Malcolm Reed. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're not familiar with Malcolm Reed. Um, uh, Google Killer Hogs and go to his website or his YouTube channel. He is king of YouTube. How to Barbecue Right. How to Barbecue Right is the name of his uh, YouTube show. And he's just a good old boy from Memphis with a thick southern accent. And he knows how to cook. And it's a lot of fun. And he'll teach you a lot if you're into learning by video. Meet Mitch. Now, we were talking about these earlier. He has a South Carolina mustard sauce. 
which I prefer um, when I make pulled pork. I always go for the mustard sauce. It's sweet, like a regular red barbecue sauce, um, but it's a uh, mu strong mustard flavor, and it's great on pulled pork. And he also has a white sauce, and here's another one over here, um, uh, Deuce. And uh, these are um, uh, sort of a mayonnaise-based um, that... Uh, at Big Bob Gibson's restaurant in Decatur, Alabama, Northern Alabama, was invented there. And they um, spatchcock or butterfly their chickens, and uh, they take, the, take them off the smoker just before they serve them and dunk them in a vat of this white stuff. And it really works. It's really nice. So if you haven't tried that. Good, if you're looking for a good mustard sauce just on a, from a local guy, uh, we do also carry mustard sauce from uh, Rack Master's Barbecue. He's local right out of St. Charles. His mustard sauce is really good. That might be yeah? something you might Which find. is your favorite? I do like that. You, that's your favorite mustard sauce? Yeah. Okay, I'm, I've started a stash here. The meathead's got his own. I've got my own little stash the going here. Shelf, the meathead shelf. Oh, well, he's fine. Well, I just live like six, seven miles from here. So I come down here and not only, you know, to shop, but to see what's new. Because he's always got the latest and the coolest. I try to have the latest and the coolest. It's so to we were also mentioning the duck fat. Mm -hmm. He's got duck fat spray, and uh, that people are using on their griddles. Now, there's a whole, this is the hottest thing going in uh, barbecue right now, are these griddles. Um, this is uh, one model that he carries called Pit Boss, and it's got a um, porcelain enamel coating on the griddle. This is your flat top or your plancha. And, uh, I mean, the easy thing is, you know, if, sunny side eggs or pancakes but you can do all kinds of stuff on here you can do uh steak in fact uh something i do when i do a tenderloin i get a whole beef tenderloin one end is kind of fat and knobby and i'll chop that off and i'll squash it flat and cook it on my plancha and uh boy i'll tell you that is good and you get a great sear on these burgers i mean all your you know joe's bar and grill there's no grill there. It's yeah. a plancha. This is what they cook on, and that's how you get that great brown sear on a smash burger. Um, and uh, there's a whole flock of these. Some of them are, you know, at the uh, at the hardware stores are, are, are cheap, um, but but this one is what seven forty nine, and it's top of the line, state of the art. It's got a grease drain here, four burners. So you can get your bacon at one temperature, and, and they're, they've become quite popular this year. It's a fun way to cook. Uh, my friend Ryan has a uh, he does a uh, Facebook page. You can check it out. It's a Barbecue Blackstone and Beer. Uh, you can actually see a lot of the people on there that uh, do a lot of great stuff on the flat top cooker. They cook a lot on the Blackstones, and it's some of the stuff that they make is just Blackstone is the is the leader it's in the this, leader. and 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 they they're very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. um, they're um, uh, carbon steel surface, which requires maintenance. Uh, carbon steel and cast iron, mm -hmm. you have to be careful. They can rust. You've got to maintain them. You've got to oil them. Um, but uh, that's what a lot of the, 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 the restaurants are using is carbon steel. And Blackstone makes some that sell for as little as 300 bucks. Right. Okay. Rubs and sauces. Anything else? Oh, we did mention, we were talking about Blues Hog, which is the flavor profile that a lot of the competitions use, uh, competition teams use. He sells it in bulk. You can buy big jugs of it here. And here's pink um, uh, butcher paper, which a lot of people like to wrap their briskets in. Um, and uh, it, it, it's, some people use foil, some people use butcher paper. It becomes a very personal preference. The butcher paper breathes a little more. What else do we have here? Well, I'm going to, to, to show you. I'm going to walk. I'm going yeah, to walk here we go. I'm following you. We got this, and, it, and it, especially everybody here, you know, the Midwest, you're out there cooking, and we do sell a, which it's been a while for us to find one. I'm going to flip us around here because I was looking at myself. Um, it's actually a magnetic light that you can clip onto your. I saw one. Display over. will stick, we'll use a regular generic term, um, will stick to most metal stuff that'll give you some light outside. So that might be a kind of a neat little Christmas gift. 
uh, that you might want to get if somebody does a lot of barbecue, now you, especially now this time of year, it's dark out all the You got to be aware, not all stainless steel is magnetic. Correct. So it, if you've got a stainless steel, try a magnet on it first, first before you buy yeah, this right. because it may not stick. Now, here's something I have, and I like this. This I cook fish in here, and you can see that's on the cover. Um, uh, can you reach, Steve? I'm, I'm kind of look at that. Too short. Doing double, double, double camera duty. I got yeah, I got one in each hand. I'm quick yeah. drug the gun here. Let's see if we can. I'm gonna set this down here. Let's see if we can open this. No, it's in. It's, a, it's, it's in, in, okay. Rubber well, rubber what it is is. Let's see if I can show you, even though it's still in the wrapping here. It, it, it's two pieces. It opens up like a book. It opens up like a book. There's a clamp here. And it opens like a book. And it's got wire that stretches. See? I don't know if you can see that. And what you can do, it stretches much wider than that, but the wrapping is in the way. And you can see from the picture, it's great for fish. You want to oil it first so the fish won't stick, and it will stick no matter how much oil you put on it. And you can now put your fish on here, and then you can just flip this, and you don't have to worry about flipping the fish because, you know, flipping the fish on a grill grate is fraught with hazard. So this is a really cool thing to have, and I really like this. And I I, I mentioned earlier, I... Uh, I'm not I use, uh, oh, okay. I'm not, not going to stretch right Okay. It's going to be a whole show in itself. I subscribe to a, uh, a service called Sitka Salmon Shares, mm -hmm. and it's a, um, a, a fishery system out of Alaska that sends me every month a box of five pounds of fish. And I'm here in Chicago, and I love Chicago. It's a great meat town, but it's not exactly the place you go for fresh fish. And uh, I've had real bad luck buying fish in the grocery stores. This comes frozen, but it's rapid frozen. It's line caught, small fishery uh, fishing. And uh, go look up Sitka Salmon Shares. Not cheap, but the product is just awesome. It's just um, fantastic fish. Yeah, and I got another product that I don't know if you've, I don't know if you've seen yeah. it or not, but I'm going to scoot back over here a little bit. I'm going to walk through. There's, there's our video. Okay. Me on my back. These are somewhat newer to us. We brought them in back in. Um, Let's see if I can get this to stand over here. Oh. I knocked it out of its holder. Well, while you're doing that, I'm looking for. Here it is. You keep going. Here's that magnetic light he was talking about. Pretty heavy magnet, too. You can see. It sticks to metal, and then it's flexible arms, so it points at the food. Pretty cool. So what we brought in, this is actually a friend of mine in Idaho, actually uh, turned me on to this. These are disposable, uh, not disposable, but uh, uh, collapsible prep tubs. They come in three sizes. The nice thing about it is you got a cutting board, so you got a cutting board on the bottom, but then they'll also expand out. So you can either do a, uh, you can do a shallow pan, I can get it to work right. Doesn't want to under, well, we're gonna do the full pan. We'll do the so you can do a deep thing. So you can do some prep in there. You can it's asked so you can marinate in it. Uh, you can also season it. It'll keep all your rubs in there, so you're not creating a big huge mess all over. But it does do this, the, the three separate sizes. So it's nice for storage. Do, correct. And then even if you it does come with a lid. So if you wanna take that marinade, put it in the fridge, you're ready to go. Nice. And show me the bottom. It's got non-skid little feet on there, mm -hmm. which is handy for cutting boards. Yeah, and it comes in three sizes. This is the smallest one. I did that just for the ease of doing. But you can go all the way up. They have an XL size, uh, which will probably fit some of your ribs and your pork butts and your brisket a little bit better in it. Very cool. How so much does that sell for? Uh, the big one's 40, 44, I believe. Uh, the smaller ones are around 20, 26, 27. Expensive hobby we got here, folks. Yeah, hey, look at this guy. Is this guy cool or what? Classic. This is the Traeger Classic. Little. Oh, you've been cooking in this one. That's Smells good in there. That's our demo. Smells really good in there. And I see something that we somebody mentioned earlier. The smoke tubes. The smoke tubes. So you can put your pellets in here on a gas grill, and they'll they'll uh, smolder. That's actually a gift, too, if you're looking. Somebody wants to smoke on their gas grill. That's a nice little gift. Comes in the two sizes. The bigger one will do up to four hours of smoking. The smaller one will do about two hours. And you can put them underneath the cooking grate, down right on top of the uh, uh, the burners. 
or if your grill's hot enough, just lay it on top. And it gives it a nice, you, you, you go for the big one because gas grills, and this is a, um, gas grills by law, I don't know if I can get around back of this. Well, I just want to show. I've got half a grid. It's perfect set up for you. So you oh, there you go. Okay. But they, the reason you want the big one is they're very heavily vented. So there's a lot of airflow escaping. Unlike the Weber kettle. I don't know if I have a kettle. Or, or, or well, here's the, 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 the top end Weber kettle here. These are airtight. And they're, they're really good seals. So you have control of airflow here, and there's no leakage. Gas grills leak like a sieve. So they're harder to smoke on. And this is a nice thing. So you put it down here. These are where the burners are. They'll get good and hot, and it'll smoke. Nice idea. Nice gift idea. Oops. Those are I wish you could smell the interior of the smoker. It smells nice. That's our fourth dimension. That allows, gives you the barbecue smell in the department. So you get the, not only awed by the sight of it, but you get the smell of barbecue. So I, I, I wandered over here. I see you have the Weber Summit Kamado now, they call it. Correct. Um, and this is the um, high-end Weber charcoal grill. And uh, pretty clever design. Um, it's it, it, the, the big green egg is a ceramic material, which is these Kamados are really great in cold climates like we are here in Chicago for winter. Um, the, uh, the, the, the uh, problem with the ceramic ones, and I'm not a fan of them, is they heat up slowly. Once you get them heated, they don't cool down very easily. It's like the old business about trying to turn a battleship. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I want heat temperature control. I still cook on my Weber kettle a lot because I can rapidly. If I want to cool it down, I just lift the lid. Um, I can uh, close the vents. Um, but these Kamados don't cool very easily. But this is their high-end unit, and it's pretty snazzy. Look, it's got a preparation shelf here. Let's see, we also do carry... If you don't want to go that high, would you also carry just the standard kettles? We got a lot of different kettles. We're up on top. So we got a whole bunch of different colors. Oh, look. Sizes. Oh, my. Yeah. We go, we got multi levels here. This place is just overflowing with goodies. Look, look, look for crying out loud. He's got rubs and sauces hanging from the girders. Yeah. We put them up oh in the middle. That's my back for the, the, the faster sellers like Heath Riles and Meat Church. And Wait, I don't see mine. No, you're not there yet. <laughs> well, you sold out. Yeah, you're selling out. So, yeah. Yeah. So this is the Weber Smoke Fire pellet smoker. I see all kinds of stuff inside that I never saw before. What's this? Well, you know, that's a that's a Weber. Has a, uh, that one's kind of set up because they did come out with a new version. Uh, it's called their Stealth model, and the Stealth model comes with that crafted accessory in it. So I want to show people what the crafted accessory looks like, uh, which is that frame that you see there that's holding the Dutch oven. Um, that allows you to put a pizza stone in there, top grate. Um, you can put the wok in there. You can put that Dutch oven. I'm putting this down for a second because I want to take this out for a second and show you something cool. Dutch ovens. Um, now, of course, Le Creuset and all the others are... I'm, 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 I'm going to break your cast iron Dutch. I'm sure. <laughs> in what world do you live in? Um, cast iron. And um, they can break if you drop them from any distance. Um, your Le Creuset's, they're enamel coated and such, and they're very pretty. But um, I'll tell you, just give me a good old-fashioned naked cast iron, um, and it works just as well as the Le Creuset's. But the one thing that there are two features that I really recommend you look for if you're shopping, and this one has it, and that's a lip. And the reason you want the lip on it is that you can put this on a grill or on a campfire and put charcoal on top. And now you have heat from above and below. And if you want to do something like a cobbler mm -hmm. or chili, you put the put it right... Get a campfire going, set it right in the campfire, 
right on top of the glowing coals and put more coals on top. And you brown the top as well as cooking from below. And that's the nice thing here. Um, the other thing I look for in a, in a Dutch oven, and I have on mine at home, is that you can get them with legs. Mm -hmm. and, and that was the way they were originally designed for cooking in a fireplace. Um, you put them with legs so that there's room for air to flow underneath, and you can set it on top of hot coals or embers, and uh, you'll get airflow underneath, and you can cook really well. So that's uh, something I think that uh, there's a couple of Louisiana companies that make Dutch ovens with the, with the lip and the legs. It's an old-fashioned design. I like them a lot. But we lifted the lid on this because this is another brand of pellet smoker. And uh, if you've been thinking about a pellet smoker, um, there's some really interesting choices out there. They've gone really high-tech. The new Traeger actually has, what is a... Um, that side burner the called induction side burner it's got a, a induction cooktop mm -hmm. on the side um i mean and 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 they're all smart they all can connect to your telephone and i gotta tell you max good who works for us full-time test grills for us and smokers he is not a huge fan of all this electronics <laughs> um uh, there, there is constant problems in in getting them to to pair with your and uh, distances and such. And I tell you, I have a Mac Two Star, which is got internet capability, and it's kind of cool. I mean, you can set up your brisket in the morning and head downtown to shop at Macy's, and then when you get back, uh, everything's going. You can monitor it while you're down. You monitor it from an airplane. Right. You can temperature control it from an airplane. I don't need that. I just, you know, I'd still walk out there with my probe and stick it in it, you know? Right. I want to I make sure that the fire is still going and hasn't gone out. I want to poke it. I want to smell it. So I don't know that I, all that technology is necessary. But this one, one of the reasons I wanted to show it to you, it's one of the few that actually has an open flame that allows you to sear. And that's one of the drawbacks to pellet smokers. Um, pellet smokers have a metal plate down here and the flame is underneath so basically they're replicating your indoor oven and that's what you have you have an indirect heat indoor oven with smoke and they do a beautiful job of smoking but if you want to sear a steak they're just not going to get the job done you need infrared radiation you need to be over a flame or over hot coals or in a metal pan for conduction energy, and you just can't get it with indirect convection airflow. So what else you want to show us today, Stephen? I don't know. I think I'm probably tapped out. You got anything else? Well, that's let's, on, we, that's on we're, you. Working our, we're working, down the wall working our way down the wall. We did the rubs and sauces. Which, um, by the way, you can always make, as I, as I was showing that customer, and I'll bring you over because I got it sitting down here. Uh, if you're looking for a gift idea that you can always do, we do. You know, I've, I've seen people here. They'll come and they'll take the uh, just a regular galvanized pail of some sort and throw a bunch of sauces and rubs in there. Oh, that's uh, cute. And they'll give that as a gift. Obviously, you wouldn't use packing peanuts, but that's all I had. Um, as you can see, it there's uh, Meathead's rub sauces are in there, and then some stuff from Croy Valley, some of their their wing sauces and and some of the their. Uh, uh, Similar to what uh, Meathead was showing you earlier with the, mm -hmm. the wing dust. That's their version of the wing dust. So that, that's another little quick little gift idea. You don't have to do one that large. We do small, uh, smaller buckets that I know I've seen people where they'll put two different sauces in, two sauces in a row, and, and uh, kind of gives a little barbecue feel with that. Nice. Here, here, here's a personal story. Oxo Good Grips. Darn, they are good. They make the best everything. Um, they are just fantastic. And years ago, I tried to buy stock in them. Yeah. My wife worked for the Food and Drug Administration, and they made me sell it because they manufacture products that are regulated by the FDA, and they can't have a conflict of interest. She was a scientist doing microbial research about food safety, and she was not allowed to own stock in a company that's regulated by the FDA. Now, if our elected politicians were told to maintain the same level of integrity that the scientists and the bureaucrats have to maintain, 
we'd have a really clean government. I had to sell my good grips, and of course it went up, and uh, I lost an opportunity to make money. What fun is a clean government? Yeah, we wouldn't have anything to talk about. Yeah, right. Now, here's a grill brush. We were talking about grill brushes there. I do not like these. See how it's a coil? I've had bad luck with them. I, I, not bad luck. I just don't think they clean as well. This is an attempt to prevent the bristles from falling out. And that, you, one's, that one's designed specifically. That one's designed specifically for the grill grapes. Ah, for the grill grapes. That's yeah. why it's split like that so you can get yeah, the grill Yeah, I see. So um, that's why we have that one. Okay. That one's there at the good old... Okay. Uh, uh, you know, we didn't we didn't mention this, but the grill grates. They have, a great, they have a great spatula. The, well, and they have a couple of them. They have a um, like a tong unit. Have you got one of those, I the fish it. tong? Yeah. Bring that over. This is one of the cool things. So you got that piece of fish. Look at this. This slides in the railings, and you can lift from below. Yes, that's what I have. And so this is like a pair of tongs, you see? So you can slide in between and clamp down on top. Great for fish. And the one I have actually is solid on the top. Hmm. So it's like a spatula on one side and tongs on the other. I like there's, that almost. There's a real better. benefit to the grill grates. Even the steak and stuff, I like that almost better than the, yeah, yeah. the spatula. I like, I like to get a good grip on things. Good grips. Um, you also have all these fun snacky guys here. That's, that's our for people who are on plant based. Stuff. Mm. That we're try, we try to please everybody here. At one of them. So I can't see the backside. If you're shopping for bear paws, they're really a nice thing to have. They're, if you're doing pulled pork, this is the best way to shred your pork. I don't know if you can see the picture there. Um, they're also great as turkey lifters um, for picking up a, a roast or a big bird or something. What I can't see is if you're shopping. I want some that are solid on the back. Some of them are, are hollow on the back, and um, dirt and um, meat scraps can collect in there. I think these are solid. If you can, check. You want to try to get them solid on both sides. Look at this. Here's that duck fat again. Not a lot of duck fat. A lot of duck fat. There's a lot of duck fat. And there's beef, beef tallow. tallow, Wagyu beef tallow. Mm -hmm. I use a lot of bacon drippings. Um, I'll tell you, um, stir fry broccoli with bacon drippings and maybe a couple of uh, almond slivers. Boy, that is good. I just have never found duck fat to be that impressive. Um, but I know French fried, uh, French fries and duck fat are real popular. Oh, Kelly's, uh, Kelly's mustard. This is a really nice mustard. Stone ground mustard. I think this is from Cleveland, didn't it? No, he's right out. Of, he's local. He's right oh, right, right, right. He's right out of Mantino. Right, right. Actually, right. he may have moved, but I think the, the company that is still there. What else have we got? I guess we're getting close to the nitty gritty. Oh, here's now. This is the griddle that I cook on. Um, I, a lodge griddle. It's it's got great. I mean, um, corrugation on the back side, but it's flat on the top. You want one with a, a lip keep the fat from dripping. And if you're cooking with these, you just got to make sure your grill is level. So you've got to get your grill level. Otherwise, if you spray oil on there, it runs downhill. And I'll tell you, you take a piece of salmon. And I learned this when I visited Oregon. I, I, I take a piece of salmon, season it up, put the flesh side, the curved side, put oil down on here, get about just a thin coat and press it down hard. And it gets beautiful golden. Flip it and get the skin crispy. And it is fantastic. And, if, you know, this is how much does this sell for? Weighs a ton. 75, I think. 75. A hell of a lot cheaper than 750 for the uh, for nice. the standalone griddle. The nice thing about that one, too, is you can use it on the grill outside. <sighs> it's also perfectly spaced so it'll fit over two burners inside on the stove. Right. And, in you fact, use it inside I grill. just did that last night. We had, we had some leftover deep dish pizza I made, and it was very thick crust, and it was cold, and I just took it and split it, poured some oil on this, and griddled it on here, and got it crunchy on top, and we served it as a side dish. But you can do the same with a cast iron frying pan. And there's a whole new breed of cast iron frying pans on the market now, some of which are pretty lightweight, and my wife appreciates that. She's lost a little strength in her hands.
Uh, Myron Mixon's book is a really good book. And whoop, looky here. That is probably one of the best books. Uh, I know Meathead's here, but that's not the you know, One of? One of. Well, probably the, the best book. The best book. best book. Thank it's you. It's the only one we really stock here at Wanamakers. I know we got Myron's book there, too. And sometimes we do have uh, Aaron Franklin's wow. Meat Manifesto. Uh, that come pops in. But uh, it is just an extraordinary book. Uh, I've talked about it before on here. Uh, the best thing about it is it's not just a cookbook. It's, it's a book that's going to give you the knowledge and science behind what you're actually doing. Uh, the different types of meat, the charcoals, the, the, the grill grates, the grilling methods. It is just a, a, and then there are recipes in there, so people won't be disappointed if there's no recipes in there. But if you got someone that's just getting into smoking or you've been doing it a while and you kind of want to just learn more, it is a fantastic book. It is, it is probably, here at Wanamaker's anyway, it's probably one of the only books I recommend that people are looking for a book is, is, the, uh, is the, uh, the Meathead's book. So. Thank you. That's very well done. Thanks, buddy. So you can get his, you can get his, I might keep that. <laughs> um, so you can get a package. I mean, his books here, his rubs are here, his sauces are here. Uh, it's great having him here. Um, he, like I said, he's a customer, so he does come to shop. So we are pushing about the hour. We are we? Probably look at okay, let's see if there's something else. What, oh, yeah, it's almost an hour. Well, I mean, is there, I know that face. <laughs> I, I'm try, I don't remember your name. I'm sorry. I've seen you around. <laughs> Maybe. Depends here. On, here. No. Well, no, I went to school out here, but no. I D have you not come to one of the barbecue seminars he does? Mm, no. I used, to, like, like, I used to teach people how to cook. Maybe you you've you've cook done co cooking instructions? Yeah. Where? All the College of DuPage and George Match back in the day when they started. Because I taught at Sheik for a while. Okay. Uh, you look very familiar. <laughs> Alan Brown. Alan, I'm Meathead. Hi, Meathead. Good to meet you. Good to see you. Yeah. Well, this place attracts all kinds of good cooks. <laughs> we're we're live streaming today. We're oh, talking I'm about gifts and stuff. Yeah, we we got three or four different channels open here, so we're talking about our favorite Christmas gifts and uh, holiday gifts. Yeah, um, I'm here to pick up a wok, I think, from my new Weber grill. Be he does have wok. Yeah, Weber wok. Itself. Yeah, I didn't get it when when I thought about it. I'm probably gonna be taking out with using my points. Good report, reward point customer. Good name. So, um, I see you have uh, some of the uh, uh, Gunther Wilhelm knives, and they're very nice knives. They're very well made, stainless uh, and uh, carbon steel, the right blend. And uh, I have a, a set of these and love them. Yeah, Absolutely that's, that's love their, them. That's their Lightning Pro. So it's, it's, it's got the plastic handle on it. So they're very light. So they're very they're, they're balanced, um, but yet very light so that they're, and they're not going to tire your hand out if you're doing a lot of trimming and stuff like that. So another, another great little, little gift. So another thing that I'm fond of are these flexible grill grate, uh, grill mats. These Really good for if you're doing small things like I smoke nuts with these. Put this in my smoker. I put my nuts on those. No. Yeah. No, don't go there. Um, uh, yeah, I, I just walk right into that. And uh, th there are variations on the theme. This one is a nice one for doing things like vegetables or shrimp. Um, brushes. Uh, much prefer these silicone brushes they really load up and hold the sauce well i do not recommend these um uh basting brushes that i just don't think you can get them clean and make them safe um so i'm i i, I would steer you away from those there's a lot of these uh, um, silicon gloves i find them slippery even though they have a surface i prefer these uh they're um, a heavy duty cloth material with a silicon embedded on them and they work better. I want fingers, I don't want mitts. I want the articulation of the fingers. So I recommend these over these. Um, what else? Um, brushes, we talked about this before in the pre-show. Uh, get them where they're embedded into plastic or metal so that the bristles don't come out. This is a good design. You don't want them coming out. Here's, I can't get in here, but these are a, the Weber bristle, bristles, and they're inside twisted metal. The bristles will not come out.
fine. You want long handled tongs? Um, I have no hair on the back of them anymore. Um, uh, you want long handled tongs? So I sell some down at the bottom there that are, are individuals. So if you're just looking to get individuals, and then Weber has some uh, great. They just changed their tools this year, and I think they upgrade them pretty nice. But the nice and that's got that on his shelf. Yeah, this is this is great for fish. Um, normally, when you go to pick up fish, they break in half if they're cooked; they fall apart. And these are just perfect for fish. And I yours as well as out. I've even converted my wife. <clears throat> um, what else? Back in here is just a the Weber department. Accessories. If you got somebody that needs new flavorizer bars or grates, not for Christmas. We do have all that. These flavorizer bars do burn out. They do wear through. They do rust out. So they can be replaced. They're not cheap either, are they? No, not anymore. <sighs> what else? All the different kinds of wood chips. All the different flavored woods. Um, chips chunks. We got wood splits. So if you're looking for a full split, we also carry, which I don't know how many people in the area do, but we also have peach wood. I know that's kind oh, of a, from Georgia. Kind of a, a <coughs> odd thing, but that had, it took me a long time to find peach chunks. The B and B probably finally put it in the bag. So we do carry peach chips and we carry peach chunks. I like chunks a lot. Um, I, I, here, this is something interesting. <clears throat> people who use wood chips on gas grills complain to me often. I throw the wood chips on the burners and they catch on fire and they burn up real quick. And what I say sets them back. I say, great, that's just what you want. When wood burns, that orange flame is the color that is created when the impurities are being burned off. There's a lot of stuff in smoke, water, water um, all kinds of gases, and that orange flame tells you that the impurities are being combusted. When they smolder, um, you get a lot of those impurities in the smoke. Now, it's nothing terrible. Um, white smoke is okay. You don't want yellow or black smoke. White smoke is okay, but the best smoke is what they call blue smoke, and that's because it's invisible, and it's invisible when the wood is burning, actually burning. So I like getting chunks, throwing them down on my gas grill between the uh, flavorizer bars, and let them burn. Okay, what else we got here? All kinds of replacement parts. There's handles. Oh, gee, my neighbor's handle is shot. I uh, forget what kettle he has, but I ought to get one of those for him. Yeah, we got a good selection. We got, you can always do fire starters, uh, chimney smart starters, got tons of nice. Oh, we talked truck. about these earlier. <clears throat> these are um, little cubes of paraffin, and um, they're perfect for starting a charcoal chimney, and that's the only way you should start a charcoal fire is in a charcoal chimney. And um, uh, just one of them is all you need. They show two there. Um, it's a little paraffin. You light it with a lighter and they uh, burn long enough to get the charcoal going. Something else I like to do is I get paraffin from the wax, uh, from the um, candle store, melt it, take a ball of newspaper, dunk it in there, and it does the same thing well. Um, charcoal chimneys. Um, I have a... Um, uh, a uh, carbon steel wok I bought in Chinatown. A really nice wok. And you get that charcoal chimney really hot. And you can cook with massive temperature, uh, massive heat, just like they do in Chinatown. It's a great way to cook on a wok. My stovetop just doesn't get hot enough, but the charcoal chimney does. Only need to fill it about halfway. I've had to cut a few holes in the top to make sure you get enough airflow through there. But the charcoal chimney with a, uh, um, a uh, carbon steel wok is a great combination, and it's fun. Yeah, you know, you know, kind of the master of cooking on top of charcoal chimneys. He's done steaks. Yeah. Just about yeah, that's, uh, that's become very popular. I think I kind of invented that. Uh, um, uh, you can uh, sear a steak very well on top of a charcoal chimney. Well. So we can close this. Close this. Thing getting, down here a little bit. Getting, getting close to closing time. Not the store, but the, the live. <laughs> One thing I did want to point out, uh, we did get in, and I'm going to kind of just scoot over here for a little bit. Um, I know I mentioned it the, uh, last week, uh, smokehouse crackers. 
uh, we did get restocked on that. We got their new pizza flavor in. Um, but the one I want to really do is um, they have a limited edition, uh, limited edition cinnamon one that they came out with. Uh, this one is their, uh, they're doing a benefit. Uh, the sale of this one helps to benefit the Children's Hospital in Alabama. Um, so if you're in the area, uh, please uh, stop in, pick up a bag of these crackers. If you're not in the area, if you're Meathead's customers and you're not in the area, uh, you can go to smokehousecrackers.com, and I believe they're on that website. Uh, you can order them from there. Uh, I know their goal is to try to sell uh, uh, $10,000 worth. Uh, I don't know which. Uh, I think Lynn said a dollar. A dollar from each bag goes to uh, the, the Alabama's Children's Hospital. Uh, so they're, they're trying to do that, and their goal is $10,000. So uh, if you can, uh, stop in here and pick up a bag or go to smokehousecrackers.com, and please pick that up. Um, and then I did want to retouch on the fact that today is Giving Tuesday, so please get out to your favorite charity. Obviously, mine is Operation Barbecue Relief. Um, get out there and uh, please make a donation if you can. And I am ready to close this down. I'm and... just looking through and I'm seeing a couple of quick questions. Sure. Um, um, and, and maybe you can answer this. Chris Cannon's asking about Kamado style smokers, the acorn. Can you add charcoal once you've started cooking on the acorn? Uh, you probably can. Uh, the thing with adding to a lot of the Kamados uh, it, is you have to almost take everything out. It's uh, another reason I'm not a fan. So, you know, if you have a brisket on there or something like that, you have to add you have to add charcoal to it. You have to lift the grate with the brisket and everything out to it to get down to that and the deflector plate um, and get down there to add that, that charcoal yeah. back in there. So it, you, that, that, These Kamados, they don't thrill me. I, I, I am a big fan of, and uh, we used it back there for a display table. I'm a big fan of um, drum smokers. If you're gonna, if you're gonna, yes. if you're gonna do that kind of stuff, they cook a little more convection. Um, they're gonna cook a little more hot and fast, so that you, you're you, you running out of charcoal is probably less likely because your your cooking times are gonna come way down. I know when we do our classes here, he cooks on a drum, and uh, you know you're looking. He's doing pork butts and briskets in, in about four to five hours, as opposed to the those real long cooks. So your your chance of running out of charcoal at that point is 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 probably not going to happen either that or you're doing something wrong because the charcoal basket down there you're going to fill it yeah. almost three quarters of the way full and that should be more than enough you need to do just about any smoker here at wanamakers uh we stock the gateway drum um which is also owned by the same people that own blues hog that's my my good friend uh tim Shear uh, down there in uh in missouri and uh so yeah rich conley is uh saying he can't find that japanese barbecue sauce on amazon no I bought mine on MilkStreet.com. Mm -hmm. um, that's Christopher Kimball's website, and uh, I bought it there. Um, or you can if you, or you can stop in a winemaker's. Or you can stop in a winemaker's. I, I don't know where Rich is located. I don't know where he's located. All righty. I think uh, we don't have a, a lot of questions. Folks have chimed in with some comments and thoughts, but uh, we were scheduled to do an hour, and it's a little more oh, than an hour, God. and uh, this was great fun. Uh, um, if you're in the Chicago suburbs, uh, stomp in and say hello to Steve and uh, browse the selection. There's just, uh, you know, I mean, shopping on Amazon is fun and convenient and uh, on the Internet is uh, easy. But there's still no substitute for trying on the shoes before you buy them. Yeah. And uh, there's no substitute for hefting and holding and touching and feeling. And uh, you can do it here. That's about it. And, uh always feel free to contact the store contact anywhere let me know if there's something you're looking for in the area or something you think that might be hot and upcoming and new because we that's where i get most of my information from it's it's uh uh i had a wise retail owner years ago tell me that retail is almost you're never going to be 100 percent, but if you listen uh to what your customers are looking for and what they say uh, you have a very good chance of uh, succeeding so that's I, I do listen to a lot i research a lot so if there's something you don't see here that you think that should be um, I will try my best, and we're looking to expand into some new areas in 2023. But we'll see, see what happens. We're looking at maybe doing some jambalaya pots and stuff. Ooh, okay. So we'll see what ha see how that goes. Everybody have a happy holidays and a happy New Year, and uh, we'll uh, see you online. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll do this again sometime. This is fun. We'll do it every once in a while. Yeah. yeah. When something comes up. So with that, uh, I'm gonna out the Wanamaker's page and uh, thank you very much for everybody to, for, for thank you for Meathead for sure for coming in and doing this. Uh, thank you for everybody for watching and uh, I hope everybody has a great day. 
Um, I know it's the holiday season. I always end with this. Uh, I know it's busier than most times. Um, please uh, let's, let's treat each other with civility and, and niceness and kindness. And uh, please be thoughtful and kind to working in the retail industry and those in the restaurant industry. Everybody has the best they can. Everybody is doing the best. And uh, let's just be a little bit more patient and uh, make sure that we're all nice to each other and to each other. And like we used to. So, with that, great advice. Great. Having worked retail many years, I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you and good night, every or good morning, everybody. Good, good afternoon, afternoon, everybody. We'll see you later. Thank you, buddy.